I see a lot of people use the term cinematic experience as if it's this some kind of insult, and I'm included in that crowd, but the difference between me and most of these commenters <laughs> is that I actually thought about it, and I'm not just repeating what I heard on Twitter. So let's start by defining the difference between a cinematic experience and just a normal story-driven video game. But first... I have to address the elephant in the room. The majority of PS4 exclusives are what you could consider cinematic experiences. You know, see, I eat anything produced by David Cage. God of War, The Last of Us, pretty much anything produced by Kojima as well to a certain extent. Although they haven't been PlayStation exclusives for a while. The point still stands. It's almost impossible to have an actual discussion about this without the entire conversation devolving into a complete autistic meltdown purely because of the connotations between PlayStation exclusives and cinematic experiences. If you can't stand them, that means you absolutely hate Sony and all of the other things it's made as well. You know, like Crash Bandicoot or... Um... What else has Sony done? But if you love them, you're just a console peasant who'll buy fucking anything. So in a desperate attempt to protect myself from the Mariana's Trench IQ takes, I'm going to try and use examples that were multiplat. But I'm going to list a few multiplat games which could be considered cinematic experiences and give my opinion on whether they actually are or not, as obviously this is all very subjective. But yeah, I'm going to use the examples that I've given my opinion on and try and build some metrics upon that that we can judge other games with. Now, look, you don't have to agree with it or anything, obviously, but, um, you know. Like, there's no real way to measure this, so it's, it's the only option I have. Now, the first example of a cinematic experience that I want to talk about had its dick collectively sucked by almost all of the internet. I am, of course, talking about The Walking Dead Season 1 by Telltale Games. Now, if we look at this objectively, Telltale Games is The Walking Dead. Uh, I'm just going to talk about Season 1 for the time being, but... Telltale Games' is The Walking Dead Season 1, if we look at it objectively, had less to offer mechanically and, to a certain extent story-wise, than anything produced by David Cage. But we see The Walking Dead Season 1 as this amazing example of storytelling and video games in general, but uh, basically the same shit done better by David Cage is seen as a joke. And that's what I don't quite understand. And I need to think about this for a while, because I don't know where this comes from. Okay, let's, let's be serious. Uh, David Cage and all of his works are panned by critics because, like, let's be honest, he's basically a freelance... Him and his team are basically a freelance game development company, right? They're, they're a super easy target for journalists to just completely dogpile. You know what, fuck it. Since I mentioned David Cage, let's talk about Fahrenheit, or Indigo Prophecy. As, uh, it's the only one I've played, and it's the only one worth mentioning that was a multiplat. If you strip away all of the bravado and the fanboyism, Fahrenheit is basically just another interactive story with a bunch of quick time events. Which sends me and my disability up the fucking wall. But that's a story for another time. Now, again, I haven't played any of the, uh, his newer games, you know, like uh, Heavy Rain, or what's that new one about the robots? Detroit Become Human. Like, I haven't played them, but judging by the uh, some of the gameplay footage I've seen, uh, it seems to have stayed the same mechanically over the years, or David Cage's games. So I would consider David Cage games to also be cinematic experiences. Of course, despite them being somewhat more game-like than what Telltale brings to the table. This isn't an either-or, it's not a binary. Visual novels. Now, the thing about visual novels is that they're kind of, by definition, cinematic experiences. If they're not cinematic experiences and they're full of gameplay and stuff, it's kind of not a visual novel anymore. Metal Gear. Wait, wait, one sec. I didn't style my hair properly and I can't find the Under Armour, but never mind. Metal Gear? Yeah, Metal Gear is very story-driven. You'd be very... Pressed, hard pressed to find someone who didn't think that. Well, unless they didn't play Metal Gear, of course, but um, the gameplay doesn't necessarily 
take a back seat to the story, even at its very worst, which in my opinion is the intro to Metal Gear Solid V, after the long drawn out intro, it puts you right in the action, and right after that intro, you watch another cutscene and then you're put in the middle of Afghanistan. And you can go wherever the fuck you want in this entire area. At its very most, most cinematic, Metal Gear is an open world RPG, so I don't know if I'd consider it one, so I'm not going to. That was fucking fun. I want to dress up more, but you know, I don't, I don't have the budget for that kind of shit, you know? You should share my video so I can make all that sweet ad revenue and I can dress up. Yeah, that's not my goal, that's not my dream or anything, but you know? <laughs> also, I don't know where I put my other shirt, so I'm just going to be wearing this uh, shirt now for the rest of the video. But now we have a few examples. I want to give you my criteria for whether something is a cinematic experience or just a normal video game. Right, and this criteria is... How much precedence the storytelling takes over the fundamental game mechanics. Which, uh, in layman's terms, if you took the story away, how fun the game would be in its way, in its place. You know, without the story or without the connotations to whatever IP it's using, etc, etc. So a relatively simple game, like Telltale's The Walking Dead, wouldn't be anywhere near as much fun if it didn't have the story behind it. Whereas a game like Metal Gear would still be just as fun, essentially. Yeah, it'd still be engaging and its mechanics can stand on their own two feet without needing the story to, you know, have people keep playing to find out what happens next. Hope this video was interesting. Uh, my throat is starting to kill me. <coughs> it was feeling sore earlier, but I just decided to power through it. And uh, yeah, special thanks to Stolen Dragoon and Ori Main and all of my other patrons. Uh, follow me on Twitter for in case you're not, you don't get notified. And join my Discord if you want as well, as that's pretty um, not very lively. There's, a, there's only uh, less than 100 people, I think. So, you know, join that too. Groovy as fuck. Bye.